Hello everyone, I am Monica Bhushan and today we are starting lecture number 2 of differential equation. Okay, so in today's class we are going to learn how to find complementary function that is CF of the differential equation. Last class we had seen that what is differential equation. So what makes very specific an equation uh, as differential equation. Now in today's class we are going to find out the solution of differential equation. Okay, so these equations which I have written down, if you will notice them, they are higher order linear ordinary differential equation with constant coefficient. What does it mean? So these all three equations which have been taken, they are higher order differential equation. Higher order is what? Last class we had seen how to find order and degree of differential equation. So this differential equation is of uh, order 2, correct? Because the highest order is of derivative is 2. Even highest derivative is order 2. Even here this is 3. So higher order means they are not order 1, more than 1, 2, 3, 4, anything will go fine. Now the second thing is they are linear in nature. So what makes these differential equations linear? Linear equation is what the degree of this differential equation is 1. So degree of any differential equation is what? The exponent of the highest order. So here you find that the degree is not 2, 3 or something. They are 1. This is one criteria. The second criteria is what? All derivatives are of degree 1. So even if this derivative is there, this is order 1 derivative, but the degree is also here 1. Second criteria. Third criteria is even if I am using any variable, so this is y or x of function, so they are also of order 1. y to the power 1, you don't have here y square or x square. So these things will not make the equation linear. So these three criteria, what we have said, the degree of differential equation is 1 and all derivatives are order 1 and any variables you are using, they are also of degree 1. So these things make differential equation as linear. The third part is ordinary differential equation. Why we are calling it ordinary differential equation? Because they are free of any partial derivative, correct? We don't have any partial derivative present here. So those partial derivative will, will see in coming classes. Now the fourth is constant coefficient. If you will see all terms are having constant coefficient, right? Here the coefficient is 1, coefficient is 1, here 6. 16, 8, 1. So those are called as higher order linear ordinary differential equation with constant coefficient. Okay. Now, if you have to find solution of this differential equation, so for that, you have to find complementary function. Here, one more thing is given that if you will see all right hand sides are actually 0. So if they are 0, they are making the ordinary differential equation as homogeneous equation. To find the general solution of homogeneous ordinary differential equation, we just have to find complementary function that is CF. And in coming classes, we'll see that the right hand side will not be only having zero. Here we will be having some functions. So in that case, general solution will be CF that is complementary function plus PI, particular integral also. But in today's class, we are just going to focus on how to find the CF that is the complementary function of differential equation. Okay, so here rules are written. We have to actually check the nature of roots of auxiliary equation. This A is auxiliary equation. We'll see which type of equation, how we have to say that this equation is auxiliary equation. But the main thing is we have to check the root of the equation and based on that root we have to analyze that what will be the complementary function of the given uh, equation. Okay, so the only real roots in today's lecture I am adding. So the next lecture will be having the roots where the roots will be imaginary roots and the complex roots. Okay, so there are two ways if I am having the roots real. So if the roots are real and they are different, they are distinct. So this is the formula for complementary function. If the roots are real and equal, so this will be the formula for complementary function. That means since my differential equation is of higher order, 
that means the root will be at least two because if two uh, roots are there that means it will be quadratic equation or the order two three four five anything will go so based on uh, that order of differential equation those many roots you will be having correct so suppose in order differential equation is there so n roots will be there m1 m2 m3 and all are the roots of the differential equation the property is the roots are real in nature okay and they all are different with each other okay so in that case my complementary function will contain those many terms those many terms will be there okay and the terms will be having c1 c2 c3 cn are nothing but the constant multiplying with e to the power m1 x plus e to the power c2 e to the power m2 x plus cn e to the power mn x in each and every term we have e to the power root into x the root m1 m2 all distinct roots are there and they are multiplying with some constant coefficient c1 c2 and all okay so if the roots are real and equal that means all m1 m2 m3 mn are nothing but just m all are same maybe they are 1 2 or anything so the complementary function will be written as all m1 m2 m3 are nothing but m only correct so what we will do we'll just make it common the e raised to mx we'll just take out common and here it will be c1 plus c2 x plus c3 x square the first term contains c x to the power 0 so it is just c1 so c1 plus c2x plus c3x square and so on so how many terms will be there in the complementary function so it depends on how many roots i am having that means what is the order of the differential equation so we'll understand more based on the question okay so here is the first question taken so this is d2y by dx square minus dy by dx minus 6y equal 0 and this type of question if they are asking in the exam that that will be nothing but your this is your higher order linear differential equation with constant coefficient correct no so you are going to find the solution or you are going to find the cf complementary function of this uh, equation since the right hand side is containing zero so you don't have to find pi particular integral here in this question the general solution will be just cf only okay so we had seen these two uh, formula correct so the first step to find the cf is the very first step is this differential equation we will be writing down in terms of d so the symbol is d what is this d d is nothing but d by dx d by dx or if it is with respect to x or with respect to anything y t anything will be there so d is d by dx what will be d square d square will be d2 by dx square with respect to if here this is y it is a y or anything correct d cube will be d3 y by dx cube and so on so why we are writing down in this fashion because we are just making the things more simpler it is d square minus d minus 6 whole y because this y this term y this variable this y we are just taken out common so this y equals 0 okay so this is the first step now the second step what we had seen in the previous slide that the nature of the root of auxiliary equation or characteristic equation also we call it this characteristic equation or auxiliary equation is what we are just rewriting this differential equation which we have written down in terms of d we are just ignoring this y okay we are just uh, what we are doing instead of d we are writing down m okay so this is nothing but m square minus m minus 6 and we are not adding this y here this is equal to 0 and so this is your second step that you are writing down auxiliary equation of the given differential equation and if this equation is given your job is to find out the root because you have to analyze the nature of the root to find out the complementary function or find out the solution of this uh, uh, this differential equation so you can use calculator right find the root of m square minus m minus x equals 0 this is quadratic in nature correct general equation if i write down this is ax square plus bx plus c equals 0 this is general quadratic equation so what will be the root roots will be 2 why roots will be 2 because the maximum power of x is 2 so the roots will be 2 
so two roots will be what this you know we have done these things in in our school days correct so this is minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4 ac by 2 into a and you can easily you can use your calculator and you can get the roots are 3 and minus 2 so x1 and x2 are nothing but 3 and minus 2 or even you can factorize also the third way is uh, find out the factor of it so 6 can be written as 3 into 2 and you know that 3m minus 2m will be 1m right minus 3m plus 2m will be minus 1m so these things will be the factor so whichever way you prefer it is okay the main job is you have to find the roots okay now the second step is also done i found out the roots are 3 and minus 2 now the third step that is the final step is we are writing down the complementary function of the given differential equation so how to write complementary function so now you are going to take this y y equals y is with respect to x we in the last class we had seen right that y is actually dependent variable x is independent variable and this is nothing but the function right so y is just see this formula which we had seen so the roots are actually distinct they are real yes they are real and they are distinct if they are distinct so we are going to use for distinct we are going to use this formula okay so how many terms i am going to take from here so since two roots are there so only two terms i am going to take so just write down c1 as it is so c1 e raised to m1 x m1 is my first root if i say anything you can write 3 or minus 2 anything for the, the, that doesn't matter so c1 e raised to 3x okay plus c2 and then e raised to the second root is minus 2 so minus 2x so uh, i have seen that some students if if this is minus root so they make it minus no need to do this minus let it be general as plus only just you have to write whether the root is positive negative whatever the root is there the real root write it down on the power of e and then x so this is the cf of given differential equation now the second question so second question is again d2y by dx square plus 8 dy by dx plus 16y equals 0. Right hand side is 0. So you just have to find complementary function to get the general solution of this given differential equation. Okay. So first step we had seen in the previous question. First step is rewrite this differential equation in the notation of d. Correct d is what d is nothing but d by dx of here of y you can think of this is d2y plus 8 uh, 8 dy plus 16y equals 0 so we are writing d2 plus 8 d plus 16 and taking out this y and this is equals 0 fine now what we are writing down first step is done second step is write down the auxiliary equation of given differential equation so in auxiliary equation we don't use this y this variable we are just writing down we are replacing this d with m so this is m square plus 8m plus 16 equals 0 and you have to find the root of this equation again this is quadratic equation that means you will be having two roots because the maximum power here is two so the roots will be two so just you have to find out the root of it use your calculator or formula or anything and here easily you can see that this is nothing but a plus b whole square formula correct a plus b whole square a square plus 2ab plus b square b is what m4 so now this is m plus 4 whole square equals 0 or you can write down m plus 4 into m plus 4 0 you got these two roots are there okay now the third step is what third step is i'm just writing down the the complementary function which is the general solution in this question so y equals y equals what we are going to do here the roots are real and the roots are same roots are not different correct so this formula we are going to use for complementary function again how many terms we are going to take only two roots are there so till here we are going to take so this is your c1 plus c2 x and then e raised to mx where my m1 m2 both are m which is nothing but minus 4 so this is the answer for this complementary function okay now the third question this is d3x by dt cube plus 3d2x by dt square equals 0 okay so this equation is if we'll see this is a higher order differential equation where the order is 3 
so this is cube function right so what we are uh, going to do so very first step is we are going to write this differential equation in d notation so this is nothing but d cube d cube x correct why because d in this case is d by dt d is d by dt so be careful whether the variables they are giving uh, not always it will be x y it could be anything all, also correct so d by dt is my capital d so d cube x plus 3 d square x equals 0 where d is d by dt or we can write down d cube plus 3 d square x equals 0 now so first step is done second step is now you write down the auxiliary equation or characteristic equation of the given differential equation so no need to write x here just replace d with m so m cube plus 3m square equals 0 and then you just find out the roots how many roots will be there in this uh, auxiliary equation maximum power of this m is 3 so definitely you are going to have three roots okay so three roots will be there so just we have factorized this is m square m plus 3 so m square equals 0 correct m square equals 0 that means m equals 0 again m equals 0 and then m equals minus 3 okay so these three roots we have got now the third step is just analyze the nature of the root and then write down the complementary function so the roots here you'll find that both cases are actually going to be applied here the roots are same the first thing is roots are real okay the second thing is roots are same and the root is different also so for these two what we will be writing down just check out that for what is there for the roots are same so since two roots are same so only two terms i'll pick from there so c1 plus c2 here it will be t correct here it will be t not x so here this is t so c1 plus c2 t and then e raised to mx what m is there the common root is 0 so e raised to 0 and then we are going to write here t okay plus now only one root is there which is different so only one term i am pick from here from the different roots wala uh, uh, part so this will be your c1 or you just c1 c2 since we have used so write down c3 so c3 e raised to what is m m is minus 3 into t so again you can simplify it c1 plus c2 t because e to the power 0 t will be 1 only so you can leave it here only plus c3 e raised to minus 3 t so this only we have got here so this is x equals this much is the answer so if you find this class useful please like and subscribe my channel thank you